This film is the property of Model Engine Corporation of America. It is not to be copied or duplicated in whole or part without written permission. Originally released in 1961 by L.M. Cox Manufacturing. This is the story of a young fellow who learned to fly and won his wings. Flying is my business, and like probably every other father with a son, I want my boy to be interested in my favorite activity. I'm lucky. The pilot here is my son Wally. I'm Art Moore. When school permits, Wally often flies with me. He's a pretty good pilot, in the air that is. Well, it's my turn now. When we get in, Wally's going to introduce me to a special kind of flying that he has discovered. Tower from Comanche, 1-5 Papa, on downwind leg, landing instructions, please. Comanche, 1-5 Papa, cleared, number one to land, runway 27. This was my first look at powered model airplane flying. Frankly, I had no idea that these ready-to-fly powered models were so accurately scaled and detailed. Wally explained that these experts practice flying every chance they get. And the way they flew, I could believe it. They were getting a P-40 ready. Two P-40s. Experts, well, I should think so, flying two planes at once. They had a sport trainer, a brand new plane I hadn't even flown yet. In these skilled hands, it was a real performer. Look at that. And in for a very smooth landing. These boys had a real fleet of planes. This was a model of our Comanche, a perfect powered miniature, detailed right down to the rivets on the wing panels and the well covers for the retractable landing gear. I was beginning to see where Wally's enthusiasm came from. Oh, nice. Every pilot appreciates a good landing. Wally said this miniature biplane was one of the best stunt flyers on short lines. Some fellows even fly it in their backyard. Powered model flying is a fast growing sport. More and more progressive cities are providing flight areas. The next weekend was clear and sunny, so we drove out to watch the flying at the local model airport. To tell the truth, I was sharing Wally's excitement. Several groups were working on planes, and the crowd of spectators indicated the growing public interest in these fascinating little planes. One was flying, then the second took his plane off, followed by the third, and skillfully keeping their control lines separated, all three flew simultaneously, almost from the same spot. The flyers told us about a special powered model flying exhibition at the county fair, so that became our next destination. They were already flying when we found the flight circle. A scale replica of an antique biplane was in the air, and its circling guided us through the crowds. Wally hurried me to the stands. Next, they demonstrated their skill in flying the big Comanche in the small enclosure. 
Wally was too excited to sit. The dogfight followed, two planes trailing streamers, each pilot maneuvering his plane to cut the ribbons of his competitor. Between flights, the versatility of the powerful model engines was demonstrated by the fast-running prop rods and the step hydroplanes. The show was climaxed by the expert we had watched practicing. Only this time, he flew three P-40s, one with each hand, the third from control lines held in his teeth. It was an exciting, crowd-pleasing finale. After the regular show, they invited someone from the audience to try flying a powered model. Wally's waving arms couldn't be missed. The flyers welcomed Wally in the circle and introduced themselves. They were three very friendly young fellows. Before they could do much talking about flying, the wings they wore caught Wally's eye. These junior pilot wings are awarded to successful powered model flyers. Wally can win his wings here and now, they tell him. He gets the word, then away she goes. Up, around, he's on his own. Looks like he's got it made. Go on, Wally, fly that plane. Steady, oh, no harm was done, but Wally's hopes sure were shattered. A hobby shop is a highly important part of every community. We were there to take the big step into the air. Look at those handcrafted models. Jack Demers, the manager, was waiting on neighbors. He has addressed our business club. A hobby shop is a vital center of craftsmanship for young and old. Name the skill, and you'll probably find some way of enjoying it here. Well, Jack's free now. He's a warm, friendly man. I introduced my young fellow, and at the mention of powered model planes, Jack's enthusiasm matched ours. I had no idea there were so many ready-to-fly models, from primary trainers to modern jets. To help Wally understand the sport, Jack demonstrated how the elevator was operated by the control lines held by the flyer on the ground. Wally remembered how particular I was about the engine when I bought our Comanche, and he asked about this one. These little power plants are Jack's great interest, it would seem. He showed us the wide range of stock engines. This is a true internal combustion engine, he explained. And while normal engines turn up to two or 3,000 RPM, this one runs around 20,000 revolutions a minute. And interestingly, that's not a spark plug. Jack had a film that looks inside the engine through animation, showing how it works. He was sure we'd enjoy it. And we were too. Typhoon in a thimble. That well describes the miniature internal combustion engine that powers today's flying model airplanes. For contrast, these piston transport engines are turning up close to 3,000 RPM. They were manufactured to tolerances in the thousands of an inch. The engine powering this truck turns much slower and being a diesel, its cylinders fire without spark plugs or an ignition system. This is also an internal combustion engine, but it turns up close to 20,000 RPM in flight, has no spark plug, and is manufactured to fantastic tolerances measured in millions of an inch. Let's look inside. The piston has delivered its power and is at the bottom of the stroke. At this position, grooves machined inside the cylinder wall are exposed and through these grooves, the fresh mixture squirts up into the cylinder for the next compression stroke and firing. As the piston moves up, compressing the fresh charge, a partial vacuum is formed in the crankcase, sucking fresh air through this filter mesh, through the venturi where it is mixed with raw fuel, entering through tiny jets here correctly metered by this needle valve and on into the crankcase past this reed valve. At the top of the stroke, 
the almost incandescent glow element in the head fires the mixture. And as the piston comes down on the power stroke, the reed valve is closed and the fresh mixture previously drawn into the crankcase compressed, ready for the next cycle. Nearing the bottom of its power stroke, the exhaust ports are exposed and the burned gases expelled. And once again, the cycle repeats with the fresh fuel mixture squirting into the cylinder. Now, watch it run. And remember, this cycle repeats more than 300 times a second in some of these wonderful little typhoons in a thimble. Jack's not only a good salesman, he enjoys being interesting and informative. Well, there goes Wally again. How can he win a pair of wings, he asked. Jack explained, take off, fly, and land a powered model successfully and win your wings. And now, which plane does Wally think he can fly? Well, Wally knew what he wanted, the PT-19 flight trainer. This is the plane designed to take it, to crash and fly apart, yet to be simply reassembled with rubber bands to fly again and again. It's the trainer with the finest flight performance, too. Ah, nostalgic memories. It was in a trainer like this that I soloed way back when. Ever see a happier young fellow making what may be an important move into the future? Learning to fly his little plane became almost an obsession with Walt. His mother despaired at mealtimes. He'd get it off around a few times, just getting the feel. Then something would happen and wham! Fortunately, the amazingly indestructible model came apart on impact, yet was undamaged. Neighborly help and some rubber bands, and it was back in the air again. For a few moments, that is. Wally persevered, encouraged by his pals. There is a wonderful spirit of friendship among those who fly their powered models. Wally's patience, born of his positive love for this sport, finally paid off. Most of the time, his flights now ended with a good landing, the plane in one piece and ready for the next flight. The next move was mine. At the hobby shop, I signed Wally's application for his wings. I'd ordered the Comanche as a special surprise. Jack countersigned and asked if he might pin on Wally's wings when they came. Wally had apparently been putting on a flying exhibition that pleased his friends when we drove up. I called him over, and the gang came along, eager to participate in the ceremony that all been waiting for. And there they were. Wally had won his wings. He was a pretty proud young fellow when Jack pinned them on. Until I saw his face light up, I'd almost been afraid my gift Comanche was capping the climax. It almost was the climax. In this world of spectators, it's sometimes pretty good to see a group of doers. And here's a bunch I'll bet the future on. I'm both glad and proud that my son is taking an enthusiastic part in this interesting and tremendously instructive man-building sport. Oh, so you've won your wings and I can navigate now. Okay, sport. You fly this Comanche for a while, but when we get back, it'll be my turn at the control lines of that model Comanche of ours. And then I'll show you some flying.